Uh, hi everybody, my name is Steve. I'm a research fellow at uh, the Digit Centre at Sussex University and we're very lucky today to have Professor Xialan Fu. Um, Xialan is the founding director of the Technology and Management Centre for Development uh, and Professor of Technology and International Development at the University of Oxford. Uh, so her research interests include innovation and technology policy and management uh, trade, foreign direct investment, and economic development. Um, she is appointed by the Secretary General of the United Nations to the Governing Council uh, of the Technology Bank of the United Nations and to the 10 member high level advisory group of the UN Technology Facilitation Mechanism. So it's fantastic to have such uh, a scholar with such um, uh, experience um, in policy practition um, as well. So uh, amongst many uh, books, papers, research grants and awards, uh, her recent books include uh, Innovation Under the Radar, uh, China's Path to Innovation, China's Role in the Global Economic Recovery, and the Rise of Technological Power in the South. So today Xialan is going to be talking about a, a Chinese video app um, and without further ado, or without spoiling the content of the talk, I'll hand over to Xiaolan uh, to introduce her research. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, for the kind introduction and uh, many thanks to the ESRC Dig Digital Futures at Work uh, Center for inviting me to the uh, uh, digital debate um, seminar series. And uh, it's an uh, honor to join uh, many of the colleagues who are uh, working in the field or interested uh, in the topic, uh, interested about the digital futures at work um, to join me today. Um, although today my, my research will, uh, uh, my talk will share with you some of my uh, research findings from an ESRC uh, GCRF funded research, looking at how um, the short video apps um, platform uh, impact and transform the life in the marginalized society. Uh, I will start to uh, share my screen. Hope you can see uh, me well. Um, so the, the title of the talk today is Live from the Farm. How Chinese video apps are uh, changing the development landscape. So based on case studies uh, that we carried out uh, in China. And uh, the implementation of the global uh, sustainable development goal, especially leave no one behind, building an inclusive and sustainable society uh, is one of the common shared goals that's shared by the global uh, community. And in, in addition to achieve this, um, there are a lot of efforts being made and it is widely now um, uh, recognized that science technology can play a very important role uh, in the global uh, implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. And uh, among all these emerging technologies in the wave of the fourth industrial revolution, the digital technologies have been emerging and play a very important role, uh, especially in bridging the digital divides uh, and bridging various divides, making impossibles possible and create an inclusive society, create inclusive society. So th this is the importance is well recognized and also Oh, in the wave of the fourth industrial revolution, one of the sector, one of the type of the technology has emerged, which is short video platform. It is different from uh, the platforms that we have seen like Facebook, it's different from Amazon, eBay or Alibaba. It's a, a platform for short videos. Short, which means normally it's less than one minute, less than one minute. And the emergence of this platform has brought together the growth of one industry. It's a short video platform industry and the creation of a new type of uh, business model, 
which is a content-based value creation model. The old production model that we have learned is always you know, a manufacturing uh, or services provision, et cetera. So you, you, you have the, the physical um, uh, materials, inputs, intermediaries, and the creation of a product. And the, this business model is different. It is content-based. So it's about something you, some content you create could be um, uh, um, uh, in words or could be you know, audio, video. Uh, can be about a particular skills that you have. You can, you can showcase or you can teach people some skills, but you can also just share a story, share your experience. So this type of content-based value creation model has been kind of uh, uh, created um, following the short video platform. And uh, however, th although the literature has looked at uh, the, 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 the um, impact of ICT, like information and communication technology, the mobile phone or internet for development, um, uh, for inclusive development, however, this short video uh, uh, platform technology and this new type of business model and its impact on the marginal size, uh, marginalized society has not been in research, has not been researched. And therefore this is a gap and this research actually aims to fill in the gap to see how does the short video platform based new business model impact on the marginalized society. So that's the motivation of the research. Uh, as I mentioned, this is an ESRC GCRF funded research that um, we carried out jointly with the University of Birmingham, Professor Pervez Gauri. And we have also local partners in China and Bangladesh. So this research carried out in two countries. Firstly, we carried out case studies, in-depth in case studies in China to understand the business model and the conditions for it to effectively help the, the, the poor people. And we developed, based on that, we developed a business model and also a, 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 a short video platform app. And we experiment this in Bangladesh. And this is already in Bangladesh and the rollout, rollout. And we are testing this generalized, modified, and then later locally adapted um, short uh, video platform app uh, and its um, impact on the marginalized society in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh. We hope from this experiment, we can learn more uh, about the conditions, uh, uh, the impact of this uh, app and also the conditions for it to generate uh, um, effective uh, impact to help the, uh, a marginalized society. So this is about uh, this research and the use mixed methods, case study uh, in China and the randomized experiment uh, intervention in Bangladesh, in Bangladesh. So today I will mainly uh, share with you uh, the findings from the case study uh, in China. So we have a, a, a provocative uh, title, Life from the Farm and the, uh, how the Chinese short video apps uh, change the landscape of international development. Um, we try to be provocative and ambitious. Um, however, our research actually has an ambition and aim. So um, with a view that the lessons from this research can be replicated in Bangladesh and from the lessons there can be replicated in many of the, the, the developing countries in the world. So um, for this research, we start from the literature uh, um, um, uh, and the an analytical framework. The literature has, you know, uh, recognized um, has a, there is a wealth of literature on entrepreneurship as a base of the pyramid. And this is also very important for poverty reduction and income growth at the base of the pyramid. However, the entrepreneurs at the base of the pyramid face barriers, significant barriers. 
including the information poverty, in addition to financial and uh, skill constraints. If the financial and skills constraints uh, you know, are not uh, unfamiliar with many of you, but the information poverty actually is also one of the barriers that face the, uh, the entrepreneurs at the base of pyramid. And the information and communication technology literature has um, suggested that ICT can be an effective tool to help overcome um, the information barriers, information barriers, and also reduce transaction cost. Not only you know the the the, the, the ICT can help many of the poor people to access a lot of information, price, uh, resources, education, uh, and the market information, etc., and also help to reduce transaction costs because. To, for, for business to grow in, in, at the base of the pyramid, for all the business, they need to search for the information uh, uh, and identify the information. And all this search and uh, identification and the contract and the, and the transaction involves a lot of costs, a lot of costs and the barriers. And the ICT are effective in reduce uh, these barriers and the, and the transaction costs. And the digital technology, as I mentioned earlier, has brought in innovations in business model and the value creation, not only the traditional model of value creation, we also see new models of value creation. I don't need initial investment. I don't need to do you know, uh, an e-business type of real transaction of goods. And I just share my experiences and my knowledge, or just share my life five minutes per day, and that can create value. That can create value if I have a mobile, if I have a mobile phone. So um, all this, um, the literature suggests, uh, based on all this literature, we have developed a conceptual framework based on the uh, uh, literature on digital platform business uh, uh, model innovation and the inclusive development. And this short video platform leads to the content-based uh, uh, um, uh, value creation model and the new business model. And the digital platform reduces the information poverty and also the transaction cost for the micro firms and the small and medium enterprises. And the short video also, it's different from the text message Text message requires people to be literate. You can read and write. And the short video also different from the audio because video also brings a lot of rich information than just text message or audio. So short video uh, um, enables a uh, um, rich information exchange between the poor, even those who are illiterate, they will be able to communicate and express themselves and they bring a lot of information. And in this platform uh, ecosystem, there are role models, there are social interactions. All these social interactions and the mechanisms on the platform and the uh, effect of the role models also have you know, inspirations for the poor, for the marginalized society. So we will see the re reduction or re remove of, of the barriers and uh, bring more people into the value creation in, uh, process. And uh, as a result, we see greater inclusiveness in income creation, capabilities building, and the enhanced increase of the aspiration in the marginalized society, and also the rise of the entrepreneurship as a base of pyramid. So that's the, the, the uh, conceptual framework of the study. But for the research, uh, for the case study part, uh, we carried out uh, um, a qualitative exploratory case study. Given the, the nature of the research question, we want to find out how. And the qualitative research methods very effective in explaining this. And we used theoretical sampling for the case selection. And we have selected uh, a company called Kuai in Chinese, Kuai Shou, uh, uh, which is a short video platform for the case study. Uh, why this single case is uh, um, uh, sufficient 
and uh, effective for the research because this is an emerging industry. This is emerging industry with very short uh, uh, history. And this is the only, the only platform that uh, mainly serves the base of pyramid users, uh, the farmers, um, but also includes the top and market users. And most of uh, its users are in the rural and in the inland region of uh, China. And it now has, uh, uh, last year, it has 300 million daily active users. And the 200 million of those daily active users are in the rural area. And there are 16 million people, users, earned money, earned income through this platform. And it is now the world's top two short video e-commerce platform. Uh, so it's success. And it is the only one uh, focusing the, the marginalized, the rural society. And also it has 10 years history. So the business model is not too short. It is mature and tested business model. So that's why we choose this case for the study. So this shows you the, the, the interface of the, the short video platform. It's very simple. People upload um, um, less than one minute. Each video is less than one, one minute. It's short. So its requirement for technology infrastructure is not very high. And it does not require high definition uh, uh, and, and technical skills. So um, the picture is not very clear, not high definition, but in, in, even in the rural mountainous area, you can watch it. You can watch it. And the, this is a platform for people to share their work, their life, their skills, uh, and also they can use it to report social injustice. So um, the farmers, the, 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 the women, uh, uh, housewives, uh, the, the youth, and the grand, grandmothers, grandpas, all use that to share their life, share their work, and to showcase their skills. Or there are some experts use that uh, uh, use the platform to um, uh, uh, to teach people how to do handicrafts. Or some um, uh, agricultural extension services provider tell people to you know, how to do the farming and the fishing, etc. And so on the on the platform. 14% use that just to record their life, their daily life, normal life in the rural village. And this, um, uh, there are people show, showing how do they do far, uh, farming, they do the, the planting, uh, uh, how they uh, raise the, 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 the lively st stocks like the cows and the uh, uh, pigs, etc. How they do the uh, um, uh, um, uh, grow rices, etc., and how they do they repair the agricultural machines. And also, even there are 2% of the users use that to, uh, to share or explain the policies about agriculture, so government policies we got. So how active it is, is every day, there are, every day there are 650 million short videos uploaded every day. And there are 55 million viewers every day on the on the platform on the platform, and as I mentioned, there are 16 million people earned money, earned income from the platform from the platform. So that's why we use this uh, case for the research. It is the only one that's very popular in the rural area. When I started to do this research, some of my assistants or students were asking me, Professor Fu, there are more advanced uh, uh, platforms, you know, uh, used by the, um, the very famous people. Why these platforms users are all poor people, uh, um, farmers, migrants, um, um, uh, youth, uh, uh, village youth. Why are you studying that? I told them it is really because of this I'm interested in the app. Why they are popular uh, in the the poor uh, uh, society and how it impact on the poor society. So for the research, we carried out uh, interviews uh, uh, of the users in the companies, multi multiple departments and the experts outside the, the, the company and also collected data from the secondary sources. And we do comparison in, uh, um, between this case and other cases like TikTok 
Later, I will explain how it, how it differs from TikTok and also integrate the, the, the evidences and the, and the research findings. So now let's uh, uh, look at the findings from the, the, the research in China. Um, the picture actually just shows one of the typical story, how this um, business model uh, impact on the rural uh, uh, society. Actually, this video was uploaded and produced by a young man living in a village, which is on the top of a mountain. And there is no road to that mountain. They have to climb the ladders. This ladder is more than 1,000 steps to the top of the mountain. Every day they have to do this and their kids have to go through this twice to go to school. And he uploaded this and he get famous. People interested in his uh, life. So on the platform, we have the content creators. They uploading the short videos and uh, they do live stream. They even now do a live stream and now they're selling products. And in this case is that this young man attract millions of fans, followers. And, uh, and they're not only interested in his own life, and also interested in, in his showing the village life on the top of the mountain. And the people started interested in the food that they eat, the products that they produced in the village. And he started to sell his family made uh, uh, products and then start to sell the products made in his village by his fellow villagers. So people start to sell the, the products in the fan base. And because of the trust already building the fan base, and so that um, the sales, you know, he does not need marketing. People ask him to, to, to buy the products from his village. So on the other hand, we have the content consumers. They either watch the videos, they watch the live uh, broadcasts, and they buy products on the platform. Uh, and uh, um, the platform is on, in the middle. So, <clears throat> so that's the, 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 the consumers and the, the, the video content creators, they have interactions. They send likes, they follow, they comment, they give gifts. And they also communicate uh, with each other and uh, uh, self-express themselves. You know, you, they gradually have, a, 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 they realize much stronger their identity, their identity. And in particular, please notice, not only the sale of products, but also the gifts. These gifts through the platform are, are monetized. So these gifts can turn into money, can turn into money. When I give gifts, I have to pay for it. I have to pay for it. So this value creation and the income generation model start to, to, to create. create. Uh, even you don't sell products, if you don't sell products. So on the, uh, on the platform, we can see the benefits from, uh, for the uh, video creators, uh, video uh, uh, consumers and the platform. Uh, and for, uh, the benefits are for both the users and the platform. So some people share the, uh, the videos. So they are sharing uh, uh, their life, their, their skills, and also uh, they, they create social networks. The, they they, they have, have fan base, they connect to other people, they have, uh, they built the followships and the so, um, socialization there. And also they have the identity building and the uh, opportunity creation. So they start, they may meet some people and start a business or earn income. We see the opportunity creation there and also the, uh, 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 start business there. And also there is a kind of uh, empowerment uh, for the users. Uh, we see um, uh, on the platform, the platform also provides training for entrepreneurship and the capabilities building, etc. And for the viewers, they not only, you know, they make friends, build social networks and the social develop social capital, they know by watching the video, people will show people how to do the farming, fishing, uh, handicrafts, or even women to do the manicure, hand, uh, uh, pedicure. They learn new skills and uh, also build up um, uh, um, uh, capabilities and they become more creative, become more creative. And also they access to services and goods. 
And of course, the platform earn income. There is a business model for the platform to, uh, you know, through uh, advertisement, through the charges uh, uh, to the transactions, or you know, the, some of the gifts, etc. So this is how this business model uh, was created. Um, um, especially, a lot of people share contents. If we see the previous uh, video, um, like this uh, little girl, she has also, you know, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of followers, and she receives uh, um, uh, likes and the gifts and the donations, and those are things can be mon monetized, can be monetized. Also, grandmom, granddads all can do this. So the business model, uh, um, um, the empowerment mechanism, uh, through the study, we have identified six, uh, five mechanisms, five mechanisms. First is technologically de-skilling uh, mechanism. So uh, this app has a very simple user interface. They have several communication tools. Uh, you know, audio, video, or text message, uh, likes, etc. They have the several communication tools you can choose. You can, or they also, um, this video processing technology uh, um, also help, um, you know, uh, reduce the barrier is that you use your camera, do the, uh, 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 choose the video function, and you produce short videos and just upload. So, Technically, they reduced the, the, the um, uh, threshold uh, entry barrier, and uh, so one of the uh, the, the, the users uh, uh, told us that people can post the videos even if they cannot write. So that's the beauty, uh, uh, one of the, the unique uh, uniqueness of this uh, um, um, uh, platform, this app. So even you cannot write, you can you can post videos, you can record and upload. And also different from TikTok and many of the, the platforms, it has a fair recommending mechanism. Many of the, the, the platforms, they recommend those most polished, high quality uh, uh, videos made by professionals, made by very skilled people or made by uh, uh, famous stars. So therefore there is a circle. You are more famous, you are more capable to make the uh, uh, nice looking video you get more opportunity for, to push and exposure and you get more, even more famous. So that's a circle. And the Yinkui, what it did is there is a fair recommending mechanism. Everybody gets the same opportunity to be recommended and, and pushed. And therefore, even you come from nowhere, there is an opportunity for your video to, to emerge, for your video emerge and, and being viewed by many others. And also, it has a bespoke supporting mechanism and training mechanism. They provide training for the grassroots uh, and, and the video producers. And also, they have provide online training classrooms to help them to make better video. So to help people to enhance the, the quality of their video, of course, behind that, they have uh, IR, AI. They have artificial intelligence to, to enhance the, the quality of the, of the videos too for you, for all the users, for all the users. And also there is an interaction enhancing mechanism. This is also very important. So um, they use the social ori uh, ori orientation to leverage and amplify the social capital. People, normally people give gifts or donations are those, you know, who know you or who you in your social network or they're more likely to give donations. So this becomes kind of in, kind of informal uh, financing mechanism or, or value creation mechanism, this social network, but it is, you know, online. And uh, so people I, I, I know, I give likes and also sometimes give gifts and those gifts can be monetized. So. The fifth mechanism is monetization mechanism to uh, um, uh, uh, to realize uh, the income uh, into into money. All those subscription, those adverts, advertisement. You know, if you become a, a popular uh, and the company, some company may want to add adverts to your um, to your short video. Yeah, you can they, you can have subscriptions. Also, you can receive gifts and also the sales uh, of goods. All those will be able to monetize on, on, the, on the platform, 
on the platform and the uh, video uh, uh, uploaders creators will receive income receive income from that they now even do live stream uh, and the live stream is sometimes overnight you can have hundreds of millions of sales um, if you become a, a very popular very popular so that's um, the uh, uh, mechanism and the, its impact on the on the uh, uh, base of the pyramid entrepreneurship is that we see the rise of base of pyramid entrepreneurs and uh, we, uh, we have already been seeing that they have you know uh, 300 million daily users 200 uh, a million in daily users are in the rural area and uh, there are many people earned income um, from the platform from the platform um, and uh, uh, there are huge production amount of production of short videos short videos and uh, so we see people start to sell their local products or they just share their their their, their life their skills they teach people how to how to uh, uh, do the farming or do the uh, fishing or do the handicrafts etc they also become a kind of knowledge uh, 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 um, 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 worker knowledge worker kind of content create uh, creator but they make income and um, uh, and for the family for the family so this is a new type of workers uh, on the platform, new type of workers on the platform. And also it helped the marketization of the resources at the base of the pyramid, like, you know, uh, uh, idle resources, including labor forces, housing, land, natural resources, or agricultural machines, etc. Then can be, can be shared or rented uh, uh, through the, the, the platform, through the platform. Um, however, for this to work, and then people will ask, you know, why this can be so popular in the rural area? And many of the farmers, even, you know, they don't know how to write properly. They, they, they also use it and then they use it, you know, they upload several videos a day. Um, and we found the enabling factors are very important, enabling factors. So um, behind this is the heavy investment in digital infrastructure in, 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 in China, which, which has addressed the accessible problem, which makes the digital technology, platform technology, even 4G, you know, accessible in rural area, in mountainous area, in mountainous area. And also um, we see significant price reduction in broadband and the mobile phone use, which uh, this happened in China, which made the the the, the internet, mobile phone, uh, the broadband affordable. Makes this technology affordable. This is another important issue: accessibility and affordability. Of course, there are need institutional support. Regulations have been introduced to safeguard the rights and interests of the parties involved in the e-commerce uh, on the platform. On the platform, so it's already ten years. There are early difficult years, and also so gradually the regulators introduced known and introduced uh, regulations to safeguard the, the online ecosystem, make it to be healthy and clean, even for young children, for, 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 for young people. And also technological enhancement. I think uh, this short video better satisfy users' demands for expression and communication also conform to the fast paced and increasingly fragmented work and life scene in the era of mobile internet. So this short video, you know, nowadays we are living in a very fast paced uh, kind of environment and this less than one minute short video really kind of, you know, complies to, 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 uh, to the kind of uh, mode uh, of our daily life and the work now. Uh, watch short videos, may watch several. Um, so, and also the, it allows people to ex express themselves much uh, in, uh, with much rich information. Uh, of course, the basic digital skills is still uh, important to be able to use very basic mobile phone. Mobile phone. Um, so these are the very important enabling in, uh, uh, factors that we found from our case study. Uh, in China, and this also raised the the, the questions, you know, um, um, for further scale up is, you know, government policy support is so important, it's very important, 
And based on all this, we have a conceptual framework, which, you know, uh, have a part of the digital business empowerment mechanism. These are the five mechanisms to empower the poor users at the base of pyramid, uh, uh, including what we mentioned, uh, technically de-skilling, um, fair recommendation, uh, um, directional supporting, um, social interaction enhancing, and the monetization mechanism. Um, and uh, with the enabling factor, the internet infrastructure and access, the diffusion and the affordability of the smartphones, and the, the, the change, uh, uh, exchange of information and the regulatory support. And this will help uh, lead to the rise of the base entrepreneurship at the base of the pyramid and the marketization of the resources at the base of the pyramid. So that's the conceptual framework that we developed based on this study. And uh, this will help the marginalized society through uh, economic growth, opportunity creation, and the wealth the creation, wealth creation, these mechanisms, these mechanisms. And so the conclusion of the case study is that through this study, we have proposed, uh, developed a conceptual model on how short video platform business model can promote uh, um, entrepreneurship at the base of the pyramid and also uh, discovered the uh, um, empowerment mechanism. And this research also uncovers the inclusive result of such short video business model uh, through the uh, growth of the entrepreneurship at the base of pyramid. And also uh, discovered the mechanism that creates inclusiveness uh, uh, of the platform. Those five mechanisms are very important to ensure the platform are inclusive for the, for the users at the both sides of the platform, the users and the consumers of the, 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 um, the content and also the growth of the platform. Um, and what we have seen is that some of the people in the marginalized society have completed, uh, you know, achieved a dual uh, transformation in terms of identity and in their role. They are transforming from agricultural producers to internet grassroots entrepreneurs. And we also see the poverty reduction at the base of the pyramid by reducing information inequality uh, through the platform technology and the business model innovation. And the policy implications uh, suggest that this um, uh, content-based platform digital or, or business model can be a tool to promote inclusive society. It can generate income and also share knowledge and the, develop the, the, the uh, enhance the, uh, the capabilities in the marginalized society and uh, contribute to the rural development. And also it suggests that the normal life of normal people is precious and everybody can create income through this ID model through this, uh, this uh, digital model, inclusive digital model. So it's not only the stars or the, the, the elite people, normal people, their normal life is valuable too, is valuable too. And uh, the government should support this type of uh, digital entrepreneurs at the base of the pyramid. And the findings also suggest the importance of the enabling factors. Um, the digital infrastructure to address the accessibility, reduction, uh, education, and the uh, training of, of the, the digital skills and the information output production, and also regulatory uh, institutional support for the whole ecosystem environment. And uh, also this research suggests digital technology can reduce inequality. It can work for poverty reduction help the very poor people, but this can, this must be accompanied by government efforts in digital infrastructure and the skills development. Without this, this platform will serve the, the middle, uh, middle class or the, 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 the urban uh, poor, the urban poor, not the absolute poor at the base of the pyramid. And uh, as a ne next, Following up research, uh, quickly, I just want to share that we developed this model and also an app 
and experiment this in Bangladesh to further understand the impact uh, mechanisms and the conditions. And uh, so what we have done is that um, this is the app, which is now can be downloaded at Google Shop. And we rolled out in Bangladesh, rolled out in Bangladesh. Um, we rolled out twice, first in, in early uh, uh, last year, April last year, 2020. And we were, we were kind of affected seriously by the pandemic. And then we rolled out second time in the summer. And uh, now we are carrying out uh, uh, collecting data uh, from the final survey, from this final survey. So this, uh, um, we did a baseline survey for the RCT and we did uh, um, um, uh, two rounds of baseline and now we have done uh, the end line survey and the results may come, up, come out later this year in autumn or winter, we will have the results from Bangladesh. Uh, so let me uh, stop here and, uh, and we can have more time for questions and answer. Fantastic. Thanks so much, uh, Professor Fu, for such a fantastic and um, interesting presentation about something I knew very little before. So I'd invite everybody to, to turn on your cameras if, you, if you'd like to and you're, you're happy to so that we can have a face-to-face a -face discussion as far as is possible. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, feel free to write it in the chat or to raise your hand uh, and I can call on you to ask your question directly. Uh, I can't resist but stepping in just to ask a couple first, if that's okay, um, Xiaolan. I mean, first of all, the, the, the striking impression I get from, um, from the paper and the research you presented is the, uh, the optimism that remains um, about big tech in China. I think over the past two or three years uh, in Europe and the US in particular, we've seen a big sea change of opinion. Uh, about tech, uh, big data, and so on. Um, and I guess you could characterize that as being one as a shift from seeing it as a facilitator of social and commercial interactions um, to, to a more critical perception of, of something that's extractive of value um, from these uh, commercial and social interactions. We kind of have shifted from seeing Facebook and Amazon and so on as being just, you know, good guys who are facilitating things to, to kind of parasites, if you will, that are extracting value from, from our interaction. So um, I don't get the sense that the discourse is in the same place in China. I think there seems still to be a lot more optimism about the possibilities uh, of big tech. So I wonder if you could reflect on, um, on that thought uh, in relation to this platform in particular. And um, second, if, if you don't mind me tagging another quick question on, maybe it's a big one. Um, you wrote a really important paper a few years back on intangibles in global value chains um, on intangible capital. Um, and I, and it, I think it was a really important contribution. And I just wonder if you could expand a little bit about where you see precisely the value being created um, in these kind of short video uh, interactions. Is it that the products which were previously, you know, basic cheap commodities like rice, which would be sold anonymously through supermarkets, are they, are they now being transformed into luxury commodities, uh, you know, with lots of intangibles associated, a backstory, you know who farmed this and so on? Um, and is it the transformation of staples into luxuries uh, where you see value being created? Or is it a bit more ephemeral? Is there, is there uh, data in the very fact of mass interactions, which can be harvested and farmed and processed by the app? And that the value lies in, in, in that kind of big data analysis that is going on just by virtue of all of these interactions. So uh, two quick questions, if you don't mind, and then we'll, we'll move on to contributions from uh, our other attendees. Uh, thank you, Steve. I think two very important and insightful uh, questions. I, I think they're really important. The first, I think um, the feelings of the market, of the users to the big tax in China currently, uh, I think um, it's in a transition period, uh, not as critical as we are now in the UK. Um, and, uh, however, not the, the, the hyper uh, uh, kind of optimism, um, more and more reflections, uh, especially regarding the privacy and the rights of the data. 
uh, uh, also uh, the, 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 the concerns and the, the attention from the users are uh, uh, increasing, are increasing. So I think it's kind of in a, in, in a transition. Um, so uh, like in, in, in Europe, about the rights of the data, we have introduced GDPR, etc. And in China, have not the, the whole institutional development and also people's awareness of this uh, have not developed to the level as we have uh, uh, in, in Europe, uh, um, in, in the UK, uh, uh, to this level. And of course, um, also is the, uh, uh, there, there are some cultural differences. There was a, 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 then a, a big uh, backlash against one of a, a famous uh, um, scholar in China because he said Chinese people care about this less. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's the, 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 the case. However, uh, there, there is some um, uh, cultural uh, difference either linked to the level of the whole social and the human development people have, whether people recognize the, 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 the data, uh, the, the rights of the data, but also overall, we can see the Chinese people's kind of acceptance to some new products, to some especially new digital products. They are overwhelmingly kind of very interested, still quite enthusiastic, like to see a, a new uh, uh, innovation. Um, so I think it's the, the level of stage of development. Um, and also this will evolve uh, over time. Uh, and uh, especially we're following the GDPR introduction in Europe. But also there are some uh, uh, culture, uh, cultural difference, uh, differences too. Like in China, people, uh, we meet people, they will ask, have you had dinner or have you had lunch? Um, and in a way, you know, how is your family, et cetera. So uh, they, they, they share the, some of the family or private uh, information between friends more. Or uh, uh, there, there are some uh, uh, cultural factors there too. So, um, but I think the concern about the, the, the big uh, uh, tech company in extracting a value, you also, you can see the changes. Uh, currently it's the digital companies. They are, you, you see the uh, resi resignation of two CEOs of the uh, large uh, di digital companies uh, of China, um, excluding uh, the, the, the former founder of, uh, of Alibaba. Uh, so I think, uh, the, the, the concern are, are rising uh, about the da data right and how the companies use the big data, uh, etc. And about intangibles, um, I think again, a very, very important and relevant question. Uh, so for this business model, a lot come from the intangibles, a lot come from the intangibles. Uh, maybe for the big, for the platform, they are accumulating the, 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 the data at the moment, they are not, the platform itself, not uh, um, um, uh, doing business using this data, uh, um, especially they are not prioritizing uh, or, or videos or pushing videos to, to, to people. However, a lot of, uh, it may have not come to that stage, it's 10 years old, um, and uh, uh, but the whole content-based the business model is really based on intangibles. Either you share your skills, farming skills, fishing skills, handicrafts, or you, some people can teach artificial intelligence uh, courses on, 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 on this platform too. So, and also sell things, uh, uh, sell products. A lot are, are, um, are, are intangibles. Um, this actually transformed a lot of intangibles, which previously was not considered as valuable intangibles, like the life experience of grandma in the poor village. Um, now, uh, or a life experience of a girl uh, in, 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 the mountain, uh, in, in the mountainous area. Uh, so transform this into, into value, uh, but also we see some of the gradual upgrading of the values, like the, 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 the stables or commodities, now they're processing. So some start from selling some products, then they start to sell the processed agri products. So it's a, a gradually a, a upgrading in process of this, um, um, uh, these uh, intangibles. 
uh, although it's a slow process in the rural area is a gradual change but we see they are you know from the selling the rural uh, uh, royal uh, 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 commodities to uh, processed uh, pro agricultural products and the culture also can be embedded and the turn into value, transform into commercial value. Fantastic. Thanks very much for a really informative uh, response there. So um, we have a few questions. So first of all, I think uh, Weijin, is, is, uh, if I've pronounced that correctly, um, you had a couple of questions in the chat. So it would be great if you could briefly introduce yourself and, uh, and ask your questions. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I, I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you, Professor, for, for um, your presentation. M my question is really much more, you have mentioned about the value creation. It is much more regarding about the negative impact of these platforms. Mm, yes, on one hand, it really provides empower the, the very poor to really you know, get information uh, and get income from it. But at the same time, um, we have no control of whether the information, whether the quality of the product, or whether what is really advocated is true. In general, it might really have a sort of a social attitude of attaching them, certain groups of people to uh, incorrect information, we might say, um, incorrect, incorrect advice about health issues. It, it can impact on a lot of other things that it, it puts agendas on government desks, what is really important or not. So there are a sort of a lot of negative, but we don't really seem to have any control on these areas. We we'll just wanted to hear from your, your input, what you really think of these things. Yeah, I, okay, thank you, uh, Virginie. I think this is another very important question. Uh, actually, looking at the history of the development of this sector, uh, both TikTok and the Kwai, over the 10 years, the first several years is a very kind of uh, volatile, how to say, uh, uh, quite a, 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 a little bit messy time um, because of the concerns that you create. Originally, the grassroots people create different from YouTube. YouTube, most of the people are, uh, you know, creators, they, they are kind of professionals, create a high quality video there. And here we have all the, the, the farmers that create just, you know, one minute video there. So, um, so there are lessons learned. I, I, the regulations are gradually, you know, introduced as a response to the, to the problems. That's what I think they paid lessons and we should learn today, um, take uh, earlier uh, uh, um, uh, policy intervention. So to, um, I think what in China is, they are now introducing the regulation to make a, a clean and a healthy uh, uh, eco online ecosystem environment by regulating the platform company. So they are not regulating individual because they know you know, uh, like 1.4 billion people difficult to regulate. They regulated these two platform company. So they are in, in introducing um, a, a requirement and the rules about uh, the contents. For example, like certain words, they are searching, you know, uh, uh, searching some rude words they do not allow to, to appear. And also what they can do is also uh, dress codes. These are, you know, what type of dress uh, uh, people have to, to wear as the bottom line, uh, et cetera. And uh, I think what you point out to the, to the dis misinformation or disinformation on the, on, the, on the platform, this is another uh, uh, important issue that they need to address. Um, I, I think I need to find out more how they, how to, how can they, you know, up to date to, to address the dis uh, information uh, problem. What they do is people report, and then they will they will they will screen. Uh, so each of the platform company they have an internal uh, system to um, to addressing the, the the like the root words or the uh, or some sensitive words or or dress codes etc. But I think whether uh, something tell is store uh, story is true or not, or the health advice is true or not, I think. Um, um, Unless it is reported, 
um, all you know being uh, 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 screened, uh, uh, noticed by their internal uh, department in the in the uh, in the process. I think this is still a challenge for all of us, even now on the internet. You know, somehow about COVID nineteen, some information how to how to really uh, uh, identify this is not true. We need a lot of um, health experts. Of course, some education of the users, you know, especially about health advices, et cetera, do not believe easily uh, or only look at more authorized uh, sources. Maybe that's another side of the efforts is to educate um, the, 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 the users to be more critical about the content. Um, what we have seen is very often is, you know, uh, about making um, makeups or dress or cooking or farming or, or, or you know but the work content is most popular one uh, on, on the on the uh, uh, on the platform. So you raised a very important issue. I think um, the regulators and the, the tech companies need to continue to find a way to 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 deal with the misinformation on the on the platforms. <laughs> Fantastic. This, this would be an opportune moment, actually, for me to uh, introduce a question from Karina, who has asked um, about the potential repercussions for people using the app uh, to report on social injustices uh, and to what extent, you know, the government is monitoring these kinds of uh, reports, whether there are any interventions uh, in those kinds of reports or not. Um, and once you've responded to that, uh, Xialan, we'll go to a final question from Elizabeth E. Wang afterwards. Okay. Uh, I think this is an issue have a lot of uh, uh, attention. I don't have the details. I don't have the details about how they were uh, uh, looking. What we have, uh, like you know, what we have seen is that on the platforms there are reports of social injustice. Um, however, um, I think widely, it, it, widely there are um, reports about you know the government, the national level. There are kind of. Uh, um, um, uh, a screen of the contents. Uh, whether the company does, uh, uh, you know, on this in, in, on this front, it's not clear. It's not clear whether this is a, a, a kind of um, national more uh, kind of uh, uh, level uh, um, checking, or this is company doing. What I I know is that they do more on the uh, on the on the wording or dressing codes. It, it, uh, those contents. Uh, whether make ensure this healthy for the children, for the young people, uh, etc. And the political wise, uh, there are reports. Uh, sometimes people say, if not, you know, spread over certain number of people, like five, uh, 1,000 or 500 people, it's not cause huge uh, national wide attention, then those things are there. Um, however, I didn't do research on this, so I cannot tell really, you know, with uh, um, uh, rigorous evidence uh, to say uh, how this is uh, um, uh, managed. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks very much. So uh, we'll go to Elizabeth for one final question before we wrap up. Would you like to introduce yourself, Elizabeth? Uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, my name is Elizabeth Wang. I'm a former Universal Police. Um, Professor Fu, and we haven't met before, so it's uh, great to see you again. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Um, my question is that, uh, uh, in your view, what is the role of a training um, or, or professional, you know, education in supporting or enabling this sort of a digital model of inclu inclusive growth? Um, I think training and uh, uh, is is very important. It's very important because. Um, for, first is basic digital skills, like, you know, uh, not necessarily learned in the, in the schools or in the university, it's even, you know, socially uh, through the social network, like my children and show me how to use mobile phone. Uh, you see, granddad learned from the uh, from son, grandson or, or, or their, their children. Um, I think this basic digital skills is very important as a starting point. And uh, and uh, and uh, of course, the popular videos or those uh, attract a lot of attentions. Gradually, people accumulate the the, the, the knowledge how to do it uh, more effectively. Even now, I need to learn how to do communication. Actually, this is a profession rather than you know everybody can do communication well. 
And uh, so this training, how to make the, the videos um, uh, um, more you know, clearer and, uh, and the more attractive, um, like quite, they do provide this kind of uh, training uh, courses, open courses to the uh, content creators. And of, uh, aiming those from a rural area, they have more bespoke uh, uh, um, uh, training and, uh, provided. And I also noticed in some of the Chinese uh, um, media, like the karaoke uh, uh, platform, they also provide bespoke advices to how to make you sing better. Uh, I used one of them. They can tell me, you know, don't sing all plainly. You have to have the high key, high notes and the low notes, uh, etc. Um, so I think this training will help people to to to, uh, to make bigger impact of their, their their content and attract more. Or I, and this is very important and related to entrepreneurial uh, skills. You know, when they are making money. Of course, some are just the kind of uh, stars and receive gifts. But if you want to start also sell products and those entrepreneurial skills also need uh, training, they provide some training too. And uh, I think local government could also play a role, even and, and NGOs play a role uh, in this. And the, like our, our experiments in Bangladesh, First, our, we rolled out in last April was hit by the pandemic and the adoption just we see, you know, was decreasing. Pandemic is one of the factors that the, 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 whether they have money to, to pay the, 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 the digital access is another and also whether they can use it, the skills to use it. So all this become uh, uh, constraints and compare this to, I think, um, this training and the government policy support is very important. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Excellent. Well, thanks, uh, uh, Professor Fu, for such a fantastic presentation, for everybody for attending and asking such interesting questions. Uh, we will be back in two weeks' time. We'll have a week off next week for school half term. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks uh, with an event with Abigail Marks. There, there it is. Uh, speaking about pandemic performance and the pace of work. So I hope everybody is able to join us then.